Welcome everyone to another episode of The Terrain Studio. I'm your host, Sean Morris. Today on The Terrain Studio, we're gonna be working on the Kashyyyk project, or continuing working, I should say. And we're gonna be starting to work on some of our platforms. So here you can see I've uh, finished one of the platforms. It's got kind of this uh, sort of hide-like uh, covering here on the bottom. Um, then the, the top is made out of uh, these skewers, and it's made to kind of give that sort of uh, tiki-type look uh, you know that real natural element. Um, you know, very organic in terms of shape. It's not. Uh, it's not structurally um, made to look like anything um, that's that's reproducible or anything like that. Very natural elements tied into the uh, into the platform. Um, this is the largest of the platforms I'm going to be making. I'm going to be making another one of these and show you how to do that um, over the next few videos. Um, I'll also be making some smaller platforms. But the idea here is just to show, show you some techniques. Um, in terms of working with some of the same materials I am, you don't have to replicate this by any means, uh, but perhaps you want to make a platform or, or just kind of figuring out how to, how to make uh, conical shapes or, or working with plastic card in general. So we're going to be working, as I said, to make one of these. So let's set this aside and show you the first step. Um, so in order to get the bottom covering that you see there, what I did is I started with two layers of plastic card, one thin layer, about a half mil, and then one thicker layer, about one mil. Um, and you'll notice that there's a few sort of design uh, elements in that actual platform. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a two piece of plastic card to A, make the structure and then two, actually tie in some of those um, sort of uh, cosmetic looks. Um, so for this, what I'm doing is I'm just using this Back to Basics uh, side edge here. This is just from uh, some of the tile system, but it actually works quite nice as a tool to make some circles. Um, so for this, what I've done is I've made a hole here in the end and I just put a screw into that. So I just screw the um, screw in and I have it just sticking out just a little bit over the end. Um, and then I have some uh, holes punched in here um, that I've made in the center. And this is where my pen fits in. And the pen just makes, um, makes it through the surface to give me uh, a marking line. So what I wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and use my plastic card. I want to uh, find a place where the radius is not going to escape the uh, actual plastic card. And I wanna go ahead and draw my circle in here. Um, so let me just do that for you. Just sort of measure this off. It looks pretty good. It's pretty straightforward. What I do is I push my um, screw into the plastic card. I set my pen in the end. I move my tool around. Here being uh, somewhat careful, I just moved it to start here. Um, there we go, I'm gonna rotate that around as best I can. There, can't quite get to the end. Let's move this a little bit. A bit more, Need quite a bit of room for this, there you go. So the circle is now drawn. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I, I actually cut this out with scissors. Uh, the thin plastic card works quite nicely. Um, it's uh, you know thicker than cardstock, but not super thick. Uh, so the scissors will allow me to cut that out. So what I'll do is I'll cut that out off camera. I'll bring you back and I'll show you what we do with this next. Okay. So we have our uh, circle done here. Uh, there's one here, uh, and this is my jig that I had from before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set that over. So what we need to do is we need to make this circle here fit into this uh, stove cover here. Um, so what I've already pre-measured this out, and what I wanna do is I wanna cut in this sort of V shape here. Um, and what this is going to do, this allows me to Fold the um, bottom uh, circle, uh, so you can see here I can fold these two pieces together. And when I do that, it's going to fit inside this stove covering. And when I press that together, voila, we have the conical shape on the bottom. So very straightforward to do this. You can obviously cut this with a knife or you can cut it with scissors your choice. I'm going to just go ahead and do this live for you. I want to make sure I don't cut past the joining point though. That's quite important because if I do, it's going to create a um, piece that could start to tear um, and then that would undermine the, uh, the integrity of the, of the cone. So I'll just be very careful when I get to the middle. 
but I just clipped that out. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna set the jig aside so I don't get that mixed up, but I will show you that this is very much the same as the piece that I just showed you. So we're gonna actually go ahead and, and join this. Um, first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put tape on it. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is after the tape on the inside, I'm going to put a bead of hot glue uh, and the hot glue will just hold that cone uh, in shape. So that I will definitely do off camera um, just so that it can solidify. Now, what I have down here is another piece. Now this plastic card is considerably thicker. You can hear the thickness difference uh, as opposed to this. Um, and so this is one mil thick here. And as I said, this is half mil. Uh, here now the reason that I use the one mil as opposed to the half mil is when we do the bottom piece here um, You'll notice that I have these and they should show up on camera these indentations um, By using the one mil what I'm able to do is create those indentations so that when I put the paper mache over It gives me those recesses and those will just look really nice when we go to paint it I uh, also notice it's a little harder to see but there's some triangular recesses uh, along the top and we're going to cut those in design as well. Um, they're a lot more effort than they're necessarily going to show up here, but I think it gives it a nice unique look and design. Um, and a lot of what we do, um, although they may seem time consuming, are actual elements that, that when compounded together really give um, the designs an overall nice look. That's, that's my opinion about it, uh, at least. Um, you may argue that there is some things that you can cut corners with. Um, I'm not really into showing that, but obviously when you do your own builds, you can decide what you do and don't value and what you have time for. Um, so I don't think I need to show you how to cut another circle out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out. Um, then we'll come back. I'll have the other piece um, glued for you. Uh, and then we'll start working on the next piece. Okay, so now we're back working on the uh, next piece. So what we effectively have at this point is, is two, two Pac-Mans. Um, one, as I said, is very thick and it's going to be the over layer to the under uh, the underside here. So the thin one on the inside and the thick one on the outside. Effectively both are going to do this. We're gonna jam them down and they're going to make a, a conical shape. Uh, so I haven't gone ahead and affixed this one just yet. I wanted to show this portion to you. So what we're going to do next is we're going to draw a design uh, into, um, into the pie shape. So what I'm going to do here is it doesn't really matter what side I, I go ahead and do this on. Um, I'll do it on, on the side I've already started, but I just wanted to uh, show you um, exactly what we're going to do here. So let me work from the blank side here first. Um, so taking our removed piece, so this right here, uh, we're going to place it on to um, the, we're just going to move it and we're going to start creating a, a pie shape going around. Now this is the, the gauge that I made before, um, so I'm just going to stick this on here just so that I get this um, just right. Now, um, effectively, uh, I arbitrarily picked what size my wedges were going to be. So, so this tool truthfully is just for me, for my size. But what I want to do is I want to, and I'll show you here, I'll just draw this in right now. And this was just a design that I picked. So you can pick whatever design you want, but um, effectively what I do here is just draw in one line. And I'm going to make a bunch of um, this size pie section uh, going around here. Now it's a little bit easier um, than you think. So I don't have to actually measure out each of those. I can actually use this as a gauge. So let me flip this over and just show you because I was just I already started over here. Um, so the piece that I just did was right there. There's the wedge. Um, and what I did was move this pie shape um, just over a little bit. And I draw a line on this side and I draw a line on this side. And that's where I got those two lines. Then I move the piece over here made a line there, moved the piece over here, made a line there, and you'll notice that I end up with um, two sort of sections that are relatively the same size, this one um, and this one over here. And even if they're not, that's not, that's not uh, important. Then I just took my, my gauge, I came over here, and I measured off uh, a section. So now I have two of these. Now what I need to do is, this was the first one, now if I move this to the second one, the one I just drew, line that up nicely, and make a new line here. 
you go. Now you'll notice that I have another line. Then all I'm gonna do is just keep advancing that to the previous um, new line each time. So the, the line I add, that becomes my new sort of marker. I line it up. I'm using the same cutout, make a new line. This is the new line. I'm gonna go to there, use that as a new marker. And again, I'm also lining up the curvature of the outside to the outside of the circle. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my next piece. Here we go. And I start to get this design that goes around. Now, the two that join here are gonna be slightly different size because when they join together, um, they should be relatively uh, close in nature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue making that go around uh, the outside of uh, the circle. And then when I come back, this uh, piece right here will have all the lines and I'll show you the next step to do with that. All right, so we've come back now and we have our pinwheel all drawn out. You can kind of see here uh, the designs that we have, the lines, uh, they're all in there. They're roughly equidescent in shape uh, and the, the ones that are on the inside, um, if they're not quite, like I said, when it goes together, it will roughly uh, balance out. This line, by the way, is also going to be pinned on the inside of the tree. So the seam will be the least likely to be seen. In fact, it won't be seen at all. Um, and that's just a, a nice technique just to hide that seam, which is going to be not a flawless piece like everything else. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we actually want to draw in a couple other concentric circles. So for that, we're actually going to go back to our tool that we had, um, our measurement gauge. And again, these are my measurements. This is more a technique. This is not something that you need to try to uh, figure out the exact measurements of. But basically what I want to do, sorry, I want to use the uh, screw head. I want to go back to the, the center placement, basically where the center of the plastic card is. And I'm going to use um, the next hole. So I've made it slightly smaller and I'm just going to show you this here. I'm just going to draw this out. Just keeping that tucked in there. Sorry, I got to move around in front of the camera potentially. I need to rotate this. Again, the key here is to keep your, your point very still. And it's easy because you, you got a screw, so you're just sort of pinning that in. Um, although I think I just moved that just a little bit, so I just redraw that line in. I say it's easy and then I go ahead and move it. So here we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that in. I think I got that relatively drawn in. Okay, so there we go. Uh, a little bit darker there, but that's fine. Um, and so this is my, uh, my design. I'm gonna start cutting in um, some triangles and, and removing some pieces below that. But uh, this just gives me a very equidescent circle around the outside. Now, if I had something perfectly um, symmetrical and round, I could lay that on the inside. The trouble is locating that center index point. So that's why I chose to just draw another circle. Um, I'm also gonna put one inside of that as well. So let me just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna try to do most of it this way so that I don't have to relocate it. I'm just gonna find that real center point there, pin it down, grab my pen, and make the line. Tempting not to move this anywhere. There, I think we did all right on that one. Okay, so now we have a line that's running on the inside. So you can see we have this little track right here. This is actually where we're gonna cut out our triangular sections, and then we're gonna go ahead and remove every 
third one of these triangles. And that's going to effectively give us the pattern that you see here. So you can see it's two triangles, one thin one, two triangles, one thin one, two triangles, one thin one. And at the top here, you can kind of see that triangular pattern that we've cut in. And then there's actual triangles removed all along the way. Um, it'll be very evident in the plastic art, less so when we get the paper mache covering on, but we will uh, show you what it looks like and you can decide kind of how you want to cover it. Maybe you like the plastic card and you just want to leave it like that with the recess sections. That's completely up to you. Um, I'm going to show you the design. I'm going to draw real quickly um, and then I'll let you guys um, just sort of with the magic of the camera, I'll come back and have most of that done. It's pretty redundant. I will probably show you uh, the last two cuts just to make sure that you guys get an idea of uh, some techniques for cutting plastic card, but uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward. So what we want to do here is we're going to, and I'm just using this as a gauge. I can also use a ruler. I'm going to go, sorry, I get my head in the way. I'm going to go from point to point. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to go point to point. And I'm going to do the next one just to show you two here. Point to point. And there we go. So I'm just going to do this triangular pattern all around and what I'm actually going to end up doing is cutting out the center portions. So this will be removed. Um, the next one, this will be half, this will be the other half, and I'll continue that pattern all the way around. So I'll cut that out, I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut out, as I said, every third triangle going around. Now, the one I like to remove is one of the two that is adjacent to uh, the seam. So if I'm just looking at this quickly, let's just say, for example, I pick this one. So if this one gets removed, I leave these two. This one gets removed, I leave these two. Remove this, leave these two. Remove this, leave these two. Remove this and leave these two. Then when I bring it together, it looks uh, very symmetrical. And I have one, two, three, four, five removed. If we look at this other one that I did here, I have one, two, three, four, five removed. So very similar pattern. You can kind of see that star formation there. Um, when I bring this together like that, it'd be very much that same star formation. So we'll go ahead and cut most of that off camera. I'll bring you guys back and we can have a look at that. So stay tuned. All right, so we have the, the pattern drawn in now. So what I'm going to do show you uh, or show you rather uh, real quickly is uh, just kind of how to cut this out and what it looks like when it's uh, all removed. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start removing um, both the, the top triangles as well as the wedges. Um, so for this, basically all I'm doing is using a ruler. Um, I am uh, lining it up on the on the triangle that I want to remove. I cut and because it's one mil, I'm going to generally use about four cuts uh, per um, section. And so just one as a scoring cut. And then I will just continue to cut through several times. Um, basically, it will start to, uh, to break away. And then I go ahead and just remove the piece there. And you can see it's a nice... Uh, nice clean cut. When these two pieces to go together, you'll probably have a little bit of issue lining up the two designs just because that first wedge was arbitrary and it doesn't necessarily match up perfectly going around here. Um, that's that's perfectly fine. I'm well aware of that. As I said, we're going to hide that on the inside. Um, just be careful when you continuously flex. You can see here even this one starting to get, oh, there we go, starting to get a little bit of a bend there. That will be covered up with the paper mache as well as the glue, so we don't need to worry about that. But just be careful when you do flex this, this thicker stuff, um, you can have a tendency to, to break or bend. Now, one of the other things too is this was an easy one because it was on the outside. Now I actually have to cut across the threshold of two. I'll show you how to do this quite easily. I'm just going to go ahead here and I'm going to cut right into the inside. Again, scoring cut, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna cut all the way through from here, all the way to the next one, even though I'm only removing this one here. That just helps me to be really consistent um, with my lines. So again, scoring cut, two, three, Four, 
and on the other side, same difference. One, two, three, four. So go ahead and punch this out. And again, you see how I punch this out? I give it a flex, it'll get a snap. I go to the other side, similar, flex, until I get, let me actually finish that cut. Like I said, only did half of that, that's right. Four. Try that again. Flex, then a snap. Flex, then a snap. Flex, then a snap. And there we go. Punches it out. So it'll be these kind of odd shaped triangles um, as we move around the outside and it's gonna create a pattern. Now, if you're paying attention and you're really astute, once I finish this pattern, this top portion, this outer ring will actually come apart as well, this bottom section is going to eventually fall away as well. I glue those on uh, sequentially and they're nice indexing and I'll show you uh, when we get to that, what that looks like. Now, I'm also going to remove one of these triangles and I'll show you what that's gonna look like. It's gonna be fairly straightforward, but I'll show you just for the um, sake of completeness. Again, lining up along the line. My cut and score pattern doesn't change. I like to have four cuts for one mil. Just um, kind of a school of uh, school of thought for me personally, Ben Snap, um, is that the the thickness for me is um, if it's one mil, four cuts. If it's if it's half mil, two cuts, scoring cut, and then one. I can bend it, um, and then I just basically use two cuts per um, half mil. So that's, that's kind of my rule of thumb. So we've now removed this piece here. So now when we flex it together, you're gonna to see there's already gonna be a wedge uh, missing here. Um, that's going to, uh, to just tie into our whole pattern. Uh, so don't be too alarmed by what this is looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the pattern off camera, bring you guys back when it is complete. Okay, so there we go. We're, uh, we're all finished, I'm just... Uh cleaning up any flash that uh, stuck on the inside. But let's push all the triangles aside and you guys can see here that we have two pieces as promised. So here's our sort of inside ring. Uh, here's our outer ring. Obviously we want to be able to line this up in the appropriate place. Um, and remembering that we cut one of these. So actually let's line this up. Do two, there we go. It goes like so. Now that's gonna go on the bottom of the, um, the uh, platform. Now, let me just overlay this one. Obviously this one is already done, but just so you know, the pattern on the shell uh, was that. And then the overlay was, if I can flex this down without uh, damaging it too much here, is effectively uh, this, oops, it's not gonna wanna stay. Um, let's try that again. Just keep in mind, these are exceptionally um, <laughs> charged with energy um, in terms of the, the flex. So that's kind of what the pattern looks like there, minus the triangles that are cut out. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and do that next. So let's set that aside before we create any more problems for ourselves. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and start removing these two. So I'll just do those live on camera. It's uh, pretty straightforward.
Um, another important uh, lesson to also pay attention to is to keep your blades, is to keep your blades changed. So I buy my XL blades in uh, large quantities and uh, I do burn through them rather quickly. Um, but when I'm working with plastic card, there's nothing better uh, than a sharp edge. And I'm gonna show you um, that uh, right now. Uh, I like this thing too, because it has a disposable uh, section right here. I can just slide the blades in and get rid of them. And I don't have to worry about them uh, loose in a garbage bag or something like that, or you know, somebody finding them later and cutting themselves or, or something like that. So I'm going to show you, I just did that two cuts and you guys have seen three cuts. It was a little bit sticky, four cuts. It kind of works. That's two cuts with a sharp blade, like butter. And so I use the four cuts almost as a safety net. Even with a dull blade, I'm going to get that through. Um, but the sharper the blade, the fewer cuts that you're going to need. And it's really nice, crisp and clean. That doesn't mean that you can't use a uh, sharp blade and cut it through four times. Just saying that you don't necessarily need um, as many cuts. So three, perfectly fine there. So my general rule, like I said, it's just two cuts per half mil. Um, that's going to ensure you're going to have, uh, have your cuts all the way through, even if your blade is not the freshest. And last but not least. Trying to pay attention here that I'm not uh, not missing my center mark. Just because it's a lot easier later when I go to match these um, back up. Okay, so uh, we have all that removed. This was our previous wedge here, and then obviously the section that we're missing. Let me slide this over. The section that we're missing uh, was the wedge that we cut um, at the start uh, to give us that flex. Um, so let's just briefly go back here for a second. Uh, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab some tape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this wedge here and just do a temporary fix for you guys until I do the, uh, the glue portion. So nothing wrong with uh, dry fitting. Uh, it, it does uh, really truthfully help. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that aside, keeping that pattern. So there's the bottom of the, the cone. Um, you know, it looks identical to this. It's exactly the shape we're working with. We have our, our ring. So what we're gonna do uh, when we attach this is I try to use hot glue to glue to the metal. It doesn't work, it's, it actually cools too quickly. So what I have done is I just take super glue and I just do a bead all along the inside. That's after I've hot glued this. Then I just press it, I hold it. I wanna keep it, uh, my hands pressing down, not, def not deforming the cone in any way. Nice equal pressure pressing it into the outsides, that's going to solidify that and give us a nice strong hold. Now, after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my, um, my collar and I'm going to put that on and I'm going to glue that in. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, <clears throat> again, keep in mind, this is the full size. So when we shrink it down, there is no um, large gap anymore. So where my seams joined here, I want to join them on my seam with the lower section as well. That's going to ensure that piece that I cut out, that wedge, is going to align here. So what I'm going to do just for purposes of dry fitting and walking you guys through this, I'm going to go ahead and just glue, or glue, tape 
that caller in. So now we have uh, the caller sitting inside the cone, do that there. You guys can see that sort of taking shape. Now for the sections that we cut and removed, this first section, the small wedge, is actually the wedge that goes here. So that's the one that fits right along the seam. Now that actually gets removed, remember. So then the next one that goes in will fit here. And what I do is I go along and I glue these in and I glue them in one at a time. Okay, remembering that this one goes here, then we're gonna have a gap. Then the next one is gonna go here. And they're going to glue like that. Now, when I glue these down, I use super glue and I hold it on and I flex it. And you just have to be careful as you're going around. Again, as your cone gets a little bit more uh, stable, it's not moving around as much because it's, it's glued in, um, this becomes a little bit easier. Now, if you don't quite get your points all the way to the point, that's fine. You can paper mache over the top and it works uh, just fine. I wanna put these back in place. When I get to the other side of the seam, keeping in mind that this one went right to it, I can line it up and I can run it right along that seam and pretty soon that seam becomes a non-seam. Um, just simply because, one, it's gonna be glued, two, this is gonna run right alongside it and I can actually overlap it just a little bit um, and that will happen because the circle on the outside is a little bit smaller than the one on the inside, it's just, it's more conical. And uh, once these all get laid in place, it's really uh, simple to do and each piece becomes uh, equally easier to, to apply. Um, as I said, you're not, you're not messing around with this flexing and moving bit. Um, and then as soon as that's done, it's going to be uh, a nice solid shape. We're gonna make it even tougher uh, when we get the paper mache on. Uh, it really hardens it up and gives it a nice shell. And another thing is this paints a heck of a lot nicer uh, than the plastic card itself, especially because um, a primer uh, coat won't even be necessary on here. We can go ahead right with our first paint layer. Um, likewise with the top, uh, this is gonna paint a heck of a lot nicer than the metal uh, that is the, the stove cover. So what I'm gonna do uh, for you guys is I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna get a, a couple pieces laid in place. As I said, I'm going to get this hot glued. I'm gonna get this first piece laid in because then it just gives me a nice solid base. And then I'll actually show you how to start applying uh, the wedges. We'll do a couple of those on camera, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're back now with, uh, as promised, the section has been glued. So we've gone ahead and done the hot glue uh, there. I just use uh, a cordless hot glue. I've had these things forever. I love them, I own two of them. Uh, you know, you just put a nice bead of, uh, of hot glue uh, right along the back. You use your tape on the front just, just to hold that in place. Uh, you don't need it overly hot. You're not looking to melt or deform this. Um, it's gonna put a little bit of a ridge here so you can see it's a, it's a little bit spiked up. Uh, that's fine. Um, all I uh, typically do will take a little bit of a sandpaper, uh, sand that down. Um, if I wanna get that any more rounded, then I've gone ahead and actually glued in the rim, as I said. But you can see it's already considerably more stable than when I was uh, sitting there holding it. So um, you just take a little bit of sandpaper at this point here. This is, uh, I believe I'm just using 80 grit here. It's fairly uh, robust. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run that along the seam. There we go. That's just gonna knock down that ridge a little bit, fill it in and, uh, and give it a little bit more of a, of a rounded feel. Um, Okay, so what we're gonna do next, and you'll notice I have my accelerant here as well, and I'm just using some Bob Smith Industries uh, glue. This is gap filling glue, uh, just thicker. I prefer the uh, purple stuff. If you can get the gold stuff, it doesn't stink. It's about $60 a bottle though, so it's pretty expensive. Um, sometimes I will get it depending on how much glue I need to, to actually put down, um, but lately I've just been cheaping out and getting the, the, the purple stuff. Um, but, 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and as I said, we're gonna fit these, uh, these guys back in here. This one fits right like that. So that's the natural position for that, right along that seam. We're going to, as I said, move one space over and we're gonna grab this guy and he is going to fit here. So I'm just putting the, basically lining the points back up. I know where I've cut out and I know where I need to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead, put some glue on the back, hold that in place as best I can. And it doesn't have to contact in all points. Remembering, I'm just gonna flex it around the edge of this just to put a little bit of curvature into it. Um, remembering that, and I'm just softening it up, that I'm gonna paper mache over this. So as long as I have a solid hold, I feel pretty good about it. So in order to do that, what I wanna do is I'm just gonna go up ahead and put a little strip of glue all around the outside. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit on the inside, keep it nice and thin. And what I do is I actually spray here, put the accelerant on, but because I put accelerant on, I'm only gonna get one shot. Mind my head's gonna get in the way here a little bit, potentially. There we go, line it up, line it up, line it up. Bring it to the top, great. Flex it down, best I can. I'm just gonna try to hold it in as many points and places as I possibly can. Give it a 15 second hold here. You can go in and tack any spots that don't hold or if they happen to lift or anything like that as you're moving around. Um, that's, uh, that's perfectly fine. There we, there we go. So the first one is down. It's a little hard to see with the glare white on white, but you can see we've got our cavity here, we've got our gap here, and we're gonna move on to the next one and it's right up at the point and it's looking pretty good. So let's go to the next one. This one is now finished. This is our next one that tells us, hey, it's got an X on it. I need to skip a space so that it would naturally go here. I'm gonna grab my next one. First, I wanna dry fit. Get rid of that. First, I wanna dry fit. Again, just checking, checking, bringing it up to the top. Looks good. I'm gonna put some glue on that. It will look nice. So, just gonna give it a little bit of a manipulation here. I'm just rounding it. This is just gonna let it sit a bit flatter on the, on the curvature. Grab my glue. Just putting a little bit on, it's very, very thin. Spritz the side, looks great. Remember to leave the gap, it's very important that you do that. So, Again, this piece would go there, so I'm gonna go over here. Point to point to point to point. Looks good. Flexing it down, this one didn't quite reach the pinnacle, which is fine. Again, we'll account for that in the, um, in the, uh, Paper mache layer. Okay, there we go. That one flexed quite nicely. So there we have two. All right, so let's progress along here.
got it. Lay this in place. Give it a 10 second hold. And then what we'll be, we'll basically call this done for part one. Part two, I'm gonna bring you back in and we're going to do the, uh, the sort of edge lining and the paper mache. And then part three, we'll do the, uh, the skewers on top. Um, and then that will basically end off uh, the platform portion. Uh, so then the next video, what you'll basically see is uh, several of the platforms done. Um, however, I'm gonna show you how to do some of the bark work as well. Uh, so we're going to start doing a little bit of that around the attachment points for these um, and then we'll do uh, we'll come back to the bark as we as we build up and down the uh, the rest of the tree just a little bit of a preview there so there we go we have that last one added so let me grab this so you guys can kind of get a sense uh the two the two steps so hopefully you can see kind of where we're going with this one the pattern is is very much the same um, we have the plastic card all laid in now. It will be, uh, you can hear just how rigid that is. Now it's a, it's a mill and a half thick plastic card. So it's considerably uh, thicker. It's got a nice rigid structure. Uh, the top's not going to, it's definitely gonna support any weight that goes on the top. Um, there's a lot of added strength. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this over with the, with the mache, as I said in the next one as well. Let's trim out the uh, the side here just to give that a little bit of a different look. And I didn't really profile that very well uh, on the other piece, but you can see here that I have some uh, sort of uh, strapping uh, along the edge. It's uh, it's a plastic straw-like structure. Um, it just tends to tie in and look pretty natural and sort of fits the whole look. So um, that'll happen in the next one. So hopefully you guys got a few tips around working with plastic card in terms of, you know, how to cut and score and do that. Um, how to make uh, you know conical shapes, how to make some templates, the importance of kind of using uh, known sizes or gauges when you're doing work. Um, just kind of keep those things to the side. Um, you know, I, I have, uh, you know, especially when you're doing redundant work, you kind of want to have those things so you're not trying to make a lot of measurements. You saw me build this entire thing without using a ruler for any measurement purposes. And that's one of the things that I really uh, do in a lot of my builds. I use a lot of known sizes. Uh, I prototype one thing, I use that, and it just speeds up the process all along the way. So uh, so there you guys have it. Uh, we have one more uh, platform, I'd say half done, um, minus paint, of course. Um, but you can see that we got a really cool structure to start working from. It's really got that Kashyyyk look. Um, if you kind of have seen any of the images, uh, you'll notice that um, there's a lot of these conical things, different shapes and things like that. It's a very...